Hello everybody. This is the story of eels, specifically the American eel. You may know eels from living in creeks, and streams, and rivers like the Hudson behind me here, but eels have an amazing life story. Let's hear about it. Every American eel along the whole east coast of North America starts their life in one place. They hatch in the Sargasso Sea, somewhere roughly between Bermuda and Puerto Rico. And when they hatch, they don't look anything like eels do that we're familiar with. They're called leptocephali. And these leptocephali look like tiny transparent tree leaves with a big head on one end and sharp teeth that they use to munch, 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 catch plankton and little small animals that are floating in the water. These tiny leptocephali, these baby eels are small. They're only the size of your thumbnail. Go ahead, stick your thumbnail up. That's the size of a leptocephali. And they ride the currents like the Gulf Stream. They ride the movement of water in the oceans all the way from the Sargasso Sea up to rivers like the Hudson River where it meets the Atlantic Ocean in New York City. And when they get close to these rivers, when they get close to these estuaries where the rivers meet the sea, a really cool transformation happens. These little baby eels transform into what we call glass eels. So in the estuaries where the fresh water and the salt water mix, the eels change. They become tiny little transparent eels. Now they're about the size of your pinky finger. Everybody stick your pinky finger out. That's about the size of a glass eel. And they're called glass eels because they're see-through. They're transparent. You can see their gills. You can see their hearts. But you can't see their lungs because they're fish. And fish don't have lungs. They use gills to breathe. So these glass eels, everything wants to eat them. So show me your glass eel, okay? What happens if something wants to eat you? You have to try and hide, but it's hard to hide. So instead, you try to be transparent so nothing can see you. Some of the glass eels get eaten, but other glass eels, they come from the ocean into the estuary and up into rivers like the Hudson. And these glass eels then go under more transformations. They become elvers, little eels that are brown and green and yellow like we're used to. Or they become slightly older yellow eels. And now maybe they're, maybe they're a foot long, maybe they're even a little bit longer. Now they're the size of your hand. Show me this, show me your hand. There's your eel now. And they might live under rocks and, and on long waterfronts. So if you take a walk along a waterfront park, you may not see any eels because they're hiding, but down in the mud and in the rocks and in the logs and in the wetlands and in the weeds, the eels are there and they're slowly looking for food to eat. So show me your eel mouth, munch, munch, munch. If they see a fish, munch, 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 they'll catch that fish. If they see a crab, crunch, 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 maybe they'll go after that crab. And if a predator tries to eat that eel, what does the eel do? It hides in the mud, it hides in the rock. Slippery as an eel, it can get away from predators. And it stays here in the rivers and in the streams and in the wetlands for many, many, many years. And it grows bigger and bigger and bigger until one day, if it's a female eel, Maybe that one day is 20 years later. That female eel is huge. Maybe now she's the size of your arm. Show me your arm. That's a silver eel now. That's an adult eel, all grown up and ready to spawn. When we say the word spawn with fish, we mean what? Lane her eggs. So this female eel, she's big and she's strong and she's three or four feet long. And now, even though she's living in the Hudson River or a stream or a pond somewhere, she knows she has to go back 
to the Sargasso Sea, back to the ocean in order to lay her eggs. So, the top of her gets very dark and her belly gets very light so she's harder to see in the ocean. Her fins get bigger so she can swim better and her eyes get large so she can see better. And believe it or not, she stops eating because all of her energy either goes into swimming or into growing her eggs. And she swims down the stream and she swims back into the estuary and she swims back into the ocean and tries to avoid predators and things that want to eat her. And if she's lucky, she makes it back to the Sargasso Sea between Bermuda and Puerto Rico in the Atlantic Ocean and there she lays millions of eggs. And when she's done laying those eggs, she dies. That's right. A female eel only does this once. But that's not the end of our story, is it? Because each of those little eggs that she lays in the Sargasso Sea, each of them may hatch into another baby eel. And that cycle of life keeps going and going and going. So next time you're down by the river or down by a stream or even a pond somewhere, take a look. They may be hard to see, but somewhere in there, there are eels and they have a really cool story to tell. Thanks everybody.